Okay, welcome everybody. We are in week, I have no idea what week we're in, Mental Breakthrough. We're doing a series week five of Mental Breakthrough. So if it's your first time watching, don't worry too much. Um, you can go watch the other messages later. There's a few messages we did on Mental Breakthrough. And I'm just gonna tell you a bit what it's about before we start. But before I get there, uh, you guys can really help us to take the owners further in a few ways. So first of all, you can like, you can like subscribe, ring the bell, send the message to a lot of people because by doing that, it does make me feel much better about myself and it does my ego well. So please, <laughs> please keep on doing that. Um, no, I do believe it's going to influence a lot of people's lives. And then um, I also want to thank everybody that's giving financially. You guys are great and you're helping us to go forward and you're helping us to reach more people, to teach more people, to help more people. For those of you who don't know what Theonos is about, Theonos is two Greek words we put together which actually will mean then the mind of God. And we want to teach people to think right, to renew their minds and to and to grow you know so we're helping people with mental health mental wealth emotional intelligence things like that is what we want to help people with so thank you for giving into that we are really appreciating it appreciating it so much so we are we're in part five of mental breakthrough part five and um, i'm going to start with the scripture john chapter 20 i'm going to read from verse 24 to 28 and i'm reading from the passion translation and um, you know, there are so many nice translations of the Bible, read a few, read different ones. You know, some people will tell me, but you know, there are certain Bibles that are not 100% correctly translated. Well, most of them aren't, it doesn't make it bad. You know, uh, it, it's, it's very difficult to take ancient Hebrew, ancient Greek and like per perfectly translating everything. But I think the most important thing, and this is not a session on how to read your Bible, but I think I'm gonna say this. I think the most important thing when reading the Bible is not so much looking for the right knowledge and looking for the right translation, although I do believe you know, that in, in its sense it's also important, but, it's, but, it, but, but the most important thing is to walk with the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit give you revelation. That's the, that's the most, most, most important thing because that's what a relationship is all about. And before I say too many things that's going to cause accusation, emails and um, bad comments, but bad comments is a good thing. The more comments, the more, the more people we reach. So if you don't like me, put it in the comment section. It really does help our algorithm a lot. And I don't read it anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, John chapter 20, verse 24 to 28, the Passion Translation. The Bible says, One of the twelve wasn't present when Jesus appeared to them. It was Thomas, whose name was the twin. That's actually, that's actually a very cool nickname. Like, I probably, probably had a twin, I hope so. Um, otherwise, it will just be a weird nickname. So, um, um, just to give you some background of the story, Jesus is walking with these twelve guys for about three years. And, you know, some of them had this idea that Jesus is going to come, he's going to overtake Rome and he's going to, because Jesus said he was going to start a new kingdom. But in that time, they didn't like the Roman government and they, they thought like Jesus is going to come and he's going to start a new kingdom. He's going to start a new, a, a, a new leadership, basically, um, in, that, in that region. And it wasn't like that. Jesus actually made it clear later that he didn't come to rule and to reign, although he, 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 he does rule and reign, but he was, he was telling the people that's not the main reason I came. The main reason I came was actually to die. And some of the disciples didn't like that very much. And Jesus said, but listen, what's going to happen is I'm going to get crucified. I'm going to be buried. And on the third day, I'm going to resurrect again. Now, in, um, in, in, in Jewish beliefs in that time, they believed if you are dead for three days, you are dead. You know, maybe, maybe sometimes they think you are dead. So on day one or on day two, you might come back. But in, but, but, but in that time, if you are dead for three days, if your body was lying there for three days, you're not unconscious, you're not in a coma, you are actually dead. That's why Jesus waited three days because people had to say, listen, this guy is dead. Before, before he resurrected again. Then on the third day, he resurrected, he came back from the dead. We see the scene again where Peter and all the disciples went fishing. Jesus appeared to them. They saw Jesus, they were excited, and they are going to this guy called Thomas. 
Now, I know this is not maybe the best disciple to see yourself as, but I see myself as Thomas, because Thomas always wanted information and proof. I'm, I, I don't know why, I'm not saying it's a good thing that I'm like that, but you know, Thomas was always, with Jesus would make statements like, you guys know the way, and Thomas is like, um, um, actually we don't, like we didn't get the roadmap or the GPS. Um, nothing is actually makes sense right now. Can you just give us a little bit more inf more information about what's happening? That's Tom Thomas, and I think I'm a little bit like that. So it's challenging doing a message on mental breakthrough. So they went to Thomas and they said to Thomas, listen, um, Jesus was in fact not lying. He, we saw him getting crucified and he, and he went to the grave, but he did rise again. We saw his body. Verse 25, so the disciples informed him we have seen the Lord with our own eyes, still unconvinced. Everybody say, still unconvinced. Thomas replied, Thomas replied, there is no way I'm going to believe this unless I personally see the wounds and nails in his hands, of the nails in his hands, touch them with my finger and put my hand into the wound of his side where he was pierced. Then eight days later, Thomas and all the others were in the house together. And even though all the doors were locked, Jesus suddenly stood before them and said, Peace to you. Then looking into Thomas' eyes, he said, Put your finger here in the wounds of my hand and put your hand in my wounded side and see for yourself. Thomas, don't give in to your doubts any longer. Just believe. Then the wounds spill out of his heart. You are my, the words spilled out of his heart. You are my Lord and you are my God. So now we're speaking about, and, and, and today I want to give us a topic. The topic for today is crush condemnation. Crush condemnation, or you can say destroy condemnation, or you can say get rid of condemnation. For you to really live a life of mental breakthrough, for you to really live a life of faith, you have to get to that place where you crush, destroy, and get rid of condemnation. What is condemnation? Condemnation more or less is more or less the same thing as guilt. I feel bad about myself. I don't feel I'm good enough. I don't feel I'm accepted enough. And today I want to speak about literally this. I don't feel like I have enough faith. So we did this, this series on, on mental breakthrough. You have to believe it in your mind and you have to see it with your imagination before it's going to happen. And all of that is 100% true. But all of that will not happen if you are still struggling with guilt and condemnation. Why am I saying that? Because guilt and condemnation takes away good expectation. If you are a person that's full of guilt, if you are a person that's full of condemnation, if you are a person that feels bad about yourself the whole time, that means you are a person that eventually you're going to feel, I'm not deserving. I'm not, I'm not good enough. I don't deserve this. I deserve punishment. I deserve bad because of what I've done. And then you have a bad expectation. So one thing that really kills our mental breakthrough or our faith is this thing called condemnation and you know what's the funny thing about the story many preachers many preachers with good intention will come and they will say doubting Thomas you know don't be like doubting Thomas don't be like Thomas who doesn't have faith be a person who believes be a person who trusts don't be like Thomas Thomas was doubting but if I read the scripture at the village, you can tell me if I'm missing it. I never read in the scripture where Jesus himself comes and he says, you are doubting Thomas. We put labels on people. Even in the Bible, we do that, I see. We put labels on people that, that Jesus never put on them. Jesus never said, said this is doubting Thomas. It's a label we've placed on him. And for some reason, some people use this, this label in preaching. And I, I sometimes look at this guy and I want to say, maybe you're not doubting Thomas. Maybe you are realistic Thomas. Maybe you are honest Thomas. And you know, many times we think because, because we, we, we feel at that moment as if our faith is not where it should be, that our imagination is not where it should be, because sometimes we fall and then we start to doubt. So here Thomas comes and he walks with this guy for three years. 
and he sees all these amazing things happen and he and he has all this faith that this guy Jesus is going to come and and he's going to build a new kingdom and he's going to have rulership over the earth and everything is going to be okay and then all of a sudden he got crucified he dies um, Peter and uh, Peter denied him Judas sold him out the other disciples ran away except for John and everybody struggled now with guilt and condemnation and Thomas got to a place where he's like, it's not that I don't believe you. It's just like I've believed before he died and my faith is kind of wavering at the moment. And um, I, I, I'm not saying I don't believe you, but what I am saying is I will believe it when I see it. And the thing that drops our faith, the thing that drops our imagination, if I can say it like that, the thing that gets us to that place where we where we start to doubt like Thomas. Now he wasn't doubting Thomas, he just doubted at that time, like all of us do. So don't say because somebody doubts sometimes that he's a doubting person. We put, the, we put that labels on people, we put that labels on ourselves. Because if we look at the disciples, I am sometimes like Thomas. I am sometimes like Peter. Sometimes I'm like John. Sometimes I'm like Bartholomew. What do you mean by that? Nobody knows what he did. So sometimes I, sometimes I feel like that. Sometimes I feel like I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, well, I, I guess I can see a bit of myself maybe in every disciple. And sometimes I'm, I'm like Peter that says, Lord, I will never leave you. Sometimes I'm like John just lying on his chest. And some, sometimes I'm like Thomas and I'm like, I, I believe you. But when it happens, then I will, then I will really believe. Are you guys like that sometimes? It's only me. Okay, so um, maybe in, maybe watching. So the thing that causes our faith sometimes to drop is if, is if we listen to a to a series like this, and we have mental breakthrough, and we have this great imagination, we have this great expectation, and this is what the series is actually all about. And everything I teach, taught, teach. That's good English. Bad English, good theology. Everything I taught up to now is 100% true, but we're going to get tired and weary in the process if we don't add the fifth message which I'm giving tonight. So it's so important to know I have to have a great imagination. I have to believe it in my, in my head. I have to go head first before I see it in the natural. And I have to do that every single day. But what about the days where it feels like my faith has dropped? Because there are days when I'm imagining great things and where I'm seeing great things and, and then something happens and I fall and when I fall that's normally the days where I believe, oh no. Um, in reality something dropped and my faith kind of dropped. My friend Ati is here, I want to tell this story. Um, I, I once went to visit him on the farm, we've been friends for, for about 20 years now I think. Yeah, 20 years close to. And I went I once went to visit him on the farm only once because of what happened in this in this occasion. So um, I'm a city boy, right? So the, the way I'm dressed now with my jeans and my sneakers and my cotton on t-shirts, that's how I went to the farm. So um, I don't actually know if I told this story before, but I, but, but, but I remember like I went to visit him and I really wanted to see horses. I, wanted, I really wanted to see the horses. I never seen horses in real life. So, um, so I really wanted to see horses. I was about 12, 13 years old. Um, and we wanted to climb on this, on this roof. Of, what do you call those places? Barn. Barn. That's so fun to say, barn. <laughs> I'm going to say that the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to say barn, like this message can wait. Well, I'm just gonna... <laughs> barn. So there was like this tree close to the barn. So Ati said, now we have to climb on the roof to, to see the horses because the horses is far away in the field. We have to climb on this tree to get on the roof of the barn and then we can see the horses. So I'm like, I, was, I was like in for it until I got to the tree. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of getting challenging because I don't know how to climb trees. So, um, so he climbed up first. He was quick. He comes from a farm. So he's like, he's up. Anybody else from a farm? One person. All of you city people like me? Okay. So um, I, 
I kind of made an effort to get on the tree. So I, I gave him my phone. I, I will never forget this. I gave him my phone, old phone that time. Well, I played Snake a lot. There was this game called Snake that I wanted to play every day. So my phone cannot get hurt. So I said, Ati, please just take my phone because if I fall and I want my phone to get damaged. So I, st I started to climb on the tree about a half an hour later, uh, hour and a half later, I was on the, about an hour and a half later, I was on the roof and Ati just started to go up. And all of a sudden he fell through the roof. <laughs> True story. And I got a fright. I, I, I screamed, Ati, is my phone still okay? <laughs> so, you know, I looked at the and, I, and he was talking to his dad and everything was okay. My phone was okay. And later I, I broke some records in Snake. Um, why did I tell you this story? Uh, no reason. They said I must speak for about 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes in life you, you get excited about a vision. You have, this, you have this mental breakthrough. You have this image. You, you say, listen, I want to see the horses. I'm going to climb up on the roof. And, and, and as you get there, you go up, 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 up. And the more you go up, the closer you get to what you want to see. And then all of a sudden something happens and you and you fall. It happens in life and then, and, then, and then the image or the vision you had is kind of like done away with. I had this image, I had this mental breakthrough, I had this imagination, I had this faith, but somewhere I fell and because of that fall, I'm not believing anymore the way I should believe. I'm not trusting anymore the way I should trust. So we want to speak in this, in this sense about the importance of resilience and how do we get to that place where we, where we become resilient. If you don't know what resilience is, I'm going to give you a definition now. So Katie Morton said this about resilience. She said, it's the capacity to recover quickly and the, the ability to manage every crisis or upset. So when I fall, I get up and then I manage. That's basically what resilience is. I get up and I manage. That sounds like what we have to do like five times a day, right? I get up and I manage. Then uh, Southwick and Charney said the following, and this is what they explained about, um, about resilience. They said, traumatic events can cause turmoil in our lives in unpredictable ways, meaning I didn't expect it. No two people will respond the same. For some, the stress of the event will become chronologic and everlasting. Many will become depressed or develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Some people may feel distressed, but they will find ways to continue in a purposeful life. For some of them, it will be as if the trauma never occurred. And for others, although some distress still occurs, they find healthy ways to cope with it. So yeah, they give two kinds of people. They say the one kind of person, they go through something and they kind of never recover. Another person can admit, listen, things are not great, what, what happened wasn't great, but they find meaningful ways to carry on in life. And I want to add this, I believe even some people get, get out of it better. Some people get out of a fall stronger. You can be that person that says, listen, I'm not just getting out of it, I'm getting out of it stronger. And somebody said to me today, he said, you know, difficult times makes a person stronger. And I said to him, no, it doesn't. I said to him, difficult times doesn't make a person stronger because I've seen people who went through difficult times and they've become much weaker. How you handle difficult times can make you stronger. That's the difference. So it's, so it's all about how you handle it. It's all about how you bounce back and it's all about how you handle this time of, of, of resilience. Lucy Hone, and I hope I, I, I'm pronouncing it right, said adversity does not discriminate Everyone deals with tough times. So I think this is kind of like the least encouraging of all the messages so far, but don't worry, it's, become, it's going to become better. All of us are going through discouraging times. All of us will go through times where we fall. All of us go through times when we fail. It's about how we bounce back. Because here's the thing about mental breakthrough. You have to have that image. You have to have that faith. But when you fall or when you fail, that image and that faith shouldn't change. That's the challenge. So how do we do that? And I'm going to give you a statement now that if you get what I'm saying, it can change your life. And here's the statement. Do not put your faith in your faith. Put your faith in Christ. 
Putting my faith in my faith is saying, is my faith strong enough? And a lot of people still do that. Is your faith strong enough? Honestly, no. Can I be dead honest with you? My faith is not strong enough. That's why I don't put my faith in my faith. I put my faith in Christ. So I'm not asking, is my faith strong enough? I'm asking, is Christ strong enough? Is Christ able, not is my faith able? So you can either put your faith in your faith, or you can put your faith in Christ. Hebrews 11, 11, Hebrews 11 verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know what faith is? A substance is like a refrigerator. Let me use an example of a refrigerator. A refrigerator or deep freeze. I think I can say that easier. Deep freeze. Barn. <laughs> deep freeze. <laughs> deep freeze, okay? So the substance is like the deep freeze. The Bible says faith is the substance for things hoped for. So let's say what I hope for is ice. What I have is water. If I put the water in the deep freeze for long enough, it will become ice. That's how faith is. If I put what I trust for, what I hope for, in faith for long enough, it will happen. But I don't put it in my faith, I put it in Christ. Not asking is my faith strong enough. Because faith, that word faith is the Greek word pistis. Pistis means a conviction of the truth of anything. I'm convicted, I'm convinced that this is true. Or belief with a predominant idea of trust. I believe, I'm convinced, I'm, I'm trusting that this is going to happen. So putting your faith in your faith saying, I'm convinced and I'm trusting this is going to happen because my faith is strong enough. Putting your faith in Christ is saying, I'm convinced that Christ is strong enough. Because there's a difference between having faith, because faith just means to be convinced. There's a difference between having faith and having faith in God. Having faith says, I believe somehow this is going to happen. I believe somebody is going to make this happen. I believe the universe is going to make this happen. That's just kind of having faith. But having faith in God is saying, I believe God is going to make this happen. So it's not, just having, it's not just about having faith. It's about having faith in the right source. Yes, I have faith, but I don't have faith in anything other than God Himself. Are you guys still with me? Now, if we become like Thomas, and if we hang out, remember I did a series, or I did a session recently called Don't Take Lot With You. And I said in the session, Lot is not a sinner. Because if, if we say don't hang with the wrong crowd, we immediately think, you know, don't hang with people that sin. But Jesus hung out with people that sinned. If I say don't take Lot with you, I'm saying don't take people with you who are toxic, who are judgmental, and who's bringing you down. And you, and you unfortunately, you get those people in the Christian community. If something bad happens, oh, your faith wasn't strong enough. You're not believing well enough. You know, we've, we've, we've even heard people that just said, you know, you went through this bad thing because you sinned, you, did a, you, you made a mistake, God is punishing you. And I just want to say that's totally false. What you're going through today is not because of something, it's not because of sin. Maybe it is because of something you did. Maybe it's a consequence of something you did, but it's not, it's, not, it's not God punishing you. God already punished Jesus. Right? If I put my hand on a hot stove and my hand burns, it's a consequence, not God punishing me. And we have to know the difference. But if we think every single time my faith is not at the right place, if we think every single time my attendance is not at the right place, if we think every single time my commitment is not at the right place and that's why it's going bad in my life, that's a lie. And we believe in everything. We, like at Theonos, we believe you should attend church, we believe you should, you should serve, I, we believe you should give, we, we believe all those things. We just don't believe you are cursed if you don't. Because, because, because some people can use it that way. You know, you didn't, you didn't do enough, that's why you're going through this. No, because, because the Bible says we are blessed through Christ. I'm not here because I'm trying to get something, I'm here because I'm already blessed. I serve God out of acceptance, not for acceptance. I believe because I'm accepted, not to get accepted.
Are you guys with me? Okay. So this is what uh, Dr. Leaf said in one of her books. She said, I have a problem about how some of the research is interpret, interpreted and how it can make some people feel, for example, for example, good people don't get sick. Or if I think enough positive thoughts and I have enough positive, positive affirmations, I will make all the bad stuff go away. This is followed by a series of toxic guilt and shame thoughts that will make us feel worse. So I want to say this, you know, we can, we can listen to a series of mental breakthrough and about faith and about imagination, all those things are great. But what if those days comes when your imagination is not that great? When your faith is not that great? If that is followed by guilt and shame and condemnation, I have to say nothing destroys your faith like that. And that is why we have to, this is the message that I'm giving tonight, we have to crush condemnation and say, listen, yes, every day I'm going to believe God. Every day I'm going to have my mental breakthrough. Every day I'm going to have my imagination right. I'm going to trust God for great things. But on the days where I don't, on the days where I fail, on the days where I, where I, where I didn't feel like I did what I needed to do, I'm not going to be condemned. I'm not going to guilt myself. I'm not going to shame myself because my faith is not in my faith. My faith is not in my works. My faith is in Christ. So this is what happened. And, and people say he's doubting Thomas and he didn't believe. But can I tell you what? Although Thomas didn't believe the way he should have believed, God still came through for him in a miraculous way. And this is my message. This is it. I'm not done. This is just it. Okay? Even if you didn't believe the way you should have believed, even after this whole series, and I'm starting a new series next week, even after this whole series, you feel like your mind and your faith and your imagination hasn't been at the place where it should be because you've failed many times and you've fallen many times and you've tried many times and it didn't work. I want to say to you, God will still come through for you because He still came through for Thomas. Thomas said, I'm not going to believe unless I, unless I can physically put my finger in his hands where the nails were and if I couldn't and if I cannot put my hand in the side and the hand in the side is actually a very interesting and very profound metaphor or symbol that the Bible is using because when when, when God gave Adam a bride where did he get the bride from his side what comes out of your side is a picture of your bride. When Jesus hung on the cross, the Bible says they speared his side and blood and water came out. And that's a picture of how Jesus Christ birthed his bride out of his side by his death, by his sacrifice, by his giving. And that's where we put our trust. And the, this picture of Thomas putting his hand in the side of Jesus is saying, listen, I'm putting my trust in you. I'm, my, I'm your bride because of what you have done for me. I'm accepted because what you have done for me. And at that time, persecution was very bad. So what happened, they went into this house and they locked all these doors and they locked them very well because they didn't want anybody to come in. Jesus didn't say, I'll go to Thomas because that's, that's sometimes how we preach it. I'll go to Thomas when he believes. When he stops speaking negative, when he stops thinking negative, I will go to him. Jesus didn't do that. He said, okay, is he doubting? Is his, faith, is his faith not strong enough? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a miracle, and that's what's going to get his faith up. You don't believe me? Let's go to Peter. The Bible says, Peter fished and he toiled all night. Jesus came and he said, cast your net out one more time. And the Bible says they caught a net breaking, boat sinking loads of fishes. Do you know what Peter did after that? He repented. People say, repent, then God will be good for you. Then God will be good to you. Repent and then God will come through for you. But if we look at this biblical story, God came through for Peter before he repented. Because Romans teaches us, the book of Romans teaches us, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. 
all the doors are locked. Everything is sealed. Jesus walks through a wall. He walks to Thomas. Can you believe it? He walks to the one who doubts. He says, Thomas, is, there what you want? is this what you want? Put your finger in my hand. Put your hand in my side. And then he makes this statement. He said, you wanted to see to believe. Oh, but blessed are those who doesn't see, but they still believe. Do you know what he said? He said, Thomas, from now on, you're going to start believing without even seeing. And this is the statement I want to give you in this message. I have one more scripture left and I'm done. If it's a miracle you need, it's a miracle that he will do. Expect, no matter where your mind is, no matter where your faith is right now, expect that he will come through for you, that he will come through for you. Not that your faith will come through for you, that he will come through for you. Because that's, that's what's going to get you to a, to a mental breakthrough. I don't have to believe harder. I don't have to believe better. I just have to believe in him. And that's where I'm going to get my breakthrough. Luke 22, verse 31 to 32, the Bible says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he might sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Listen to what he said. He said, I pray that your faith would not fail. He never said, I pray that you won't fail. He said, in the process of failing, in the process of falling, in the process of making mistakes, I pray that your faith doesn't fail. And this is my prayer. That your faith shouldn't fail in Him. Keep believing in Him. Not in your faith. Because understanding this will give you a mental breakthrough. Understanding this will get you to that place where you say, listen, I can keep that picture. No matter how many times I fall, no matter how, how many times I fail, no matter how many mistakes I make, I can keep that picture. I can keep that mental breakthrough. Because my faith is in Him, my belief is in Him, my imagination is in Him, and my calling is in Him. And He will sustain me. Even if He has to walk through a wall to show me what He needs to show me to get me over my doubts, He will do that. All I have to do is trust in Him, and He will do what He needs to do. Father, I thank You for for every single person that's watching and every single person that's part of the session. And, and I just thank you right now, Father God, that you will do with people what you did with Thomas. If there's any person that's watching that feels like Thomas, I want to tell you, everybody that labeled him as doubting Thomas, Jesus didn't label him that way. People labeled him that way. And maybe you've been going through things and people have labeled you and people said your faith isn't strong enough or you didn't do good enough or you messed up too much. That's a lie. We fail and we fall because we are human and we live in a broken world. No matter how good or bad we are. But if we put our trust in Him, I, I can promise you that He's going to do that miracle. He's going to walk through any wall He needs to walk through and He's going to do whatever He needs to do to show you who He is. Don't let your faith in Him fail. I just want to say if there's anybody watching, whether you're sitting here live, whether you're watching um, on YouTube, if there's anybody sitting here that says, listen, my life is not right with God. I have to give my life back to Jesus Christ. Not your attendance can save you. Not your goodness can save you. Not your knowledge can save you. Only you giving your life to Christ can save you. So if that's you and you're saying, listen, that's me. I need to give my life to Christ. Just lift up your hand. This is the, the only way you can be saved is if you get to that place where you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. If that's you, just lift up your hand. And, and if you lift it up your hand, just put your hand on your heart and pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I cannot save myself. I acknowledge that I need a savior. I ask you now, Jesus, to come and to save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody, for watching. You guys are great. I will see you. We're starting a new series next week. Um, on people pleasing so don't miss our series on people pleasing and then through December and January we have guest speakers we have one from New Zealand one from Chicago one from England and one from right here in South Africa so don't miss our guest speakers that will be on YouTube love you guys and from the whole Fiona's team we'll see you soon again goodbye